Hi guys, what we're gonna go over in this video is how to work the Moat Shiny app using Chi-Square. So I'm gonna go over here to Variance Overlap and click on Chi-Square V for Kramer's V. And so what you wanna do is look at your output and enter the values needed for this, which is the actual Chi-Square, so the statistic provided, the sample size, so total in, the number of rows and the number of columns. So let's go over here and look at um, some output from three popular programs. So first we have JASP. JASP, well this uh, analysis was like the number of friends people had by the number of kids people had. So it's kind of just a silly book example. And we're trying to see if people who have more friends have more kids or vice versa. And so first thing I can spot here is N. So N is gonna be 60. So let's come over here and enter sample size as 60. So it's the total number of counts. Here's chi-square. So we didn't turn on all the options in JASP. You can get likelihood ratios and some other stuff, but mainly I wanna look for chi-square here, which is 2.05. It also has N labeled down here, just in case you weren't sure. So we're gonna enter 2.05. And I also get Kramer's V down here. So we'll see how close our number is. Now degrees of freedom is listed as four, but that's not what I want. What I want here is the number of rows. So we've got three possible row combinations and the number of columns, which is also three. So this is a three by three contingency table. And so what we wanna do is enter three here and three here. This might be a two by two or one by four. Now if the number is here, it does not, um, is not over two. Um, so you have to have at least a two by something or two by two, two by three, two by eight, whatever. Um, this will give you an error. Number alpha is our type one error criterion. Most people use 0.05, so we're just gonna use that, but that's gonna change your confidence interval width. So let me hit calculate here. Now, it'll give you a definition. So V is often interpreted as sort of a variance overlap statistic uh, because it's kind of like a correlation. It's not perfectly like that, but you can think about this as how much of the variance is accounted for by rows and columns. V here gave me 0.13 and a 95% uh, confidence interval is 0.18 or 0.3 to 0.30. Now that may, um, given the, the limits of chi-square of the distribution, it may give you NA. And when it gives you an A, that just means that the confidence limit cannot be found. It gives you an interpretation of that confidence interval, which says that it doesn't include zero, so it's probably different from zero. It gives you the test statistic, um, so chi-square four, well, four degrees of freedom is 2.05, so this should match our output. And we would say this is not significant because our p-value is greater than alpha. So it will give you these numbers back directly. We got the same Kramer's V that's down here, but now, additionally, I have the confidence interval. Now I'm gonna do this from SAS. Well, I could come down here and use, here's the chi-square value. And then here's V again. So we know we're getting pretty close. Now for sample size, I'm just gonna look down here on the total total. Now don't be confused, that's 100% here. So this one included the row and column percents, but sample size is 60. And we would know that it's three rows and three columns by looking at it. So one, two, three, one, two, three. So from SAS, you gotta remember that total total is total N. Um, and then down here, because degrees of freedom is not related to N, it's related to rows and columns, but here's chi-square. All right, let's now look at SPSS. Now SPSS, we also did a, a lot of counts and residuals but um, this one at least tells you in down here. It's also here under total, total. So total, total. I would know it's three rows and three columns by counting. One, two, three, one, two, three. And then here's chi-square. Um, and so what we've got now is how to pull each one of those directly from the output. There's one more chi-square option in, um, in mode here but let me show you first the code. So what's happening to calculate V is that we're doing chi-square, so the number you enter directly, divided by N, sample size here, times DF smaller. DF smaller is the minimum of rows minus one or columns minus one, and that's why you have to enter both of them here. Also entering both of them allows us to calculate the degrees of freedom so that we can calculate P for your chi-square for you. 
you wanted to use this directly in mode, you do v.chi.square and enter basically all the same information. All right, so let's talk about the second type of chi-square that you can calculate using our app. And this time I was able to figure out how to make the text bigger. <laughs> so what I've done here is I've picked variance overlapped and switched from V to odds. Now our odds thing currently only does two by two chi-square, and this will give you an odds ratio. And since this is only two by two, it's kind of interpreted like a correlation where it's the percent of variance accounted for by DV, but it's also sort of more of the odds of one to the other. So odds is kind of in a weird category here, but um, it is in the same size as a correlation. And so the easiest way to explain what's happening here is to move this screen over here and show you just kind of a web page that explains odds ratios. So um, what's happening is that we have a two by two layout. And what you wanna do is enter row one, column one in the first box, row one, column two in the second box, row two, column one, row two, column two. So this will be one, 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 two, two, one, two, two. And the way the odds ratio is calculated is A divided by B, all divided by C divided by D. Right? So I think that just helps you see what's happening, but it's going to represent the odds of A to C, given that A is in row one and C is in row two. All right, and so that's kind of what this says over here when it ex is explaining what's happening, which um, is, you know, one, one divided by one, two. So the, the think about that as row, comma, column. So one, one is row one, column one. And then a little bit of an interpretation here. So it's the odds of box one, one, given that there's level one overall versus box two, one, given that two exists overall. So we might enter some numbers here. So let's say it's 20 out of, and then 40, and then there's, you know, maybe 10 out of 50. I'm gonna pick my alpha, type one error is 0.05. I'm gonna flip over here. And so the one reason why we can't totally use this definition, which we'll probably change it here, is that it's not really a percent variance anymore because odds can get over one. And so it doesn't really make sense to treat this as sort of a correlation measure even though it kind of is. So the odds of this 20 to this 10, given that there are other people in that row is 2.5. So there's a 2.5 likelihood for one one versus two one. Okay. So it's not simply 20 over 10, that would be a two, but it's you know given that there are other um, people, this 40 and the 50. Um, the nice thing about this is that you can calculate the odds of any given cell. You would just reorder what order you put the cells in. So let's say instead we wanted to know about the 40 to 50, I could switch these and get the likelihood of this group of 40 to the likelihood of this group of 50, and that would change the odds. So now the odds are much lower for the 40. And so anytime you have an odd, odds right on one means there's a one to one likelihood that are equally likely odds less than one approaching zero um, would mean that the second group is more likely odds over one would mean that the first group is more likely. Uh, and the way I always think about odds is kind of like a sports betting um, odds. So the odds of team one winning is 0.4 to one, which means team one is not gonna win. But if you say the odds of team one winning is 10 to one, team one is 10 times more likely to win. So keep an eye out. We're gonna update this interpretation so that it explains odds a little better. And these are how you calculate our two types of chi-square or um, kind of categorical data effect sizes in Moat.